Today, one year after Lisa, we are introducing the third industry milestone product, Macintosh. You've just seen some pictures of Macintosh. Now I'd like to show you Macintosh in person. All of the images you are about to see on the large screen will be generated by what's in that bag. Hello, I am Macintosh. It is with considerable pride that I introduce a man who's been like a father to me, Steve Jobs. Now, <clears throat> this is what they look like today. And I would uh, like to take the privilege of showing you what they're going to look like from today on. This is iMac. The whole thing is translucent. You can see into it. It's so cool. We've got stereo speakers on the front. We've got infrared right up here. We've got the CD-ROM drive right in the middle. We've got dual stereo headphone jacks. We've got the coolest mouse on the planet right here. <clears throat> Come on around. All of the connectors are inside one beautiful little door here, the Ethernet, the USB stuff. Around the back, we've got a really great handle here. The back of this thing looks better than the front of the other guys, by the way. Now, what do people want? They want an advanced OS that runs Mac apps, right? Is that what you want? And it is my great pleasure today to announce our strategy for Mac OS X. It is a big leap in the Mac OS roadmap, and yet it is also the best of evolutionary. It takes the Mac OS into new territory, into the biggest leap it's had since it was first introduced in 1984. So I got one last thing. Um, I got back to Apple along with several other people uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, what we found was uh, a great company that needed a little bit of help, a lot of incredibly talented people. During this time, I've been the interim CEO. I have another job at Pixar as the CEO, which I love, and um, so I was the interim CEO at Apple. Well, I think after two and a half years, I hope that we've been able to prove to our shareholders at Pixar and our shareholders at Apple that maybe we can pull this dual CEO thing off. And uh, so I'm not going to be changing any of my duties at either Pixar or Apple, but I'm uh, pleased to announce today that I'm going to drop the interim title. <laughs> And we are introducing a product today that takes us exactly there, and that product is called iPod. iMac, iBook, iPod. This is what iPod looks from the side. Again, about three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to show you the back first because I'm in love with it. It's stainless steel. It's really, really durable. It's beautiful. And this is what the front of it looks like. Boom. That's iPod. I haven't had one right here in my pocket, matter of fact. <laughs> there it is, right there. This amazing little device holds a thousand songs. And it goes right in my pocket. These services treat you like a criminal. <laughs> and they are subscription-based. And we think subscriptions are the wrong path. So. We decided, since no one else was doing this, that we were going to do it. And we started about a year and a half ago to create a music store. Music downloads done right. Today, we've got 200,000 tracks. We're loading in tracks every single day. This is going to keep on growing and growing and growing. All of this music with all of these rights, you can buy for 99 cents per song with no subscription fee. Now, let's go to a big topic.
transitions. Let's talk about transitions. The Mac in its history has had two major transitions so far, right? The first one, 68K to PowerPC. The second major transition, though, has been even bigger. And that's the transition from OS 9 to OS 10 that we just finished a few years ago. And so it's time for a third transition. And yes, it's true. <laughs> Mac OS 10 has been leading a secret double life for the past five years. There have been rumors to this effect that every release of Mac OS X has been compiled for both PowerPC and Intel. This has been going on for the last five years. <laughs> every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. And Apple's been very fortunate. It's been able to introduce a few of these into the world. In 1984, we introduced the Macintosh. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. Well, today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> no. So you're a developer, and you've just spent two weeks, or maybe a little bit longer, writing this amazing app. And what is your dream? Your dream is to get it in front of every iPhone user. And hopefully they love it and buy it, right? That's not possible today. Developers don't, most developers don't have those kinds of resources. Even the big developers would have a hard time getting their app in front of every iPhone user. Well, we're going to solve that problem for every developer, big to small. And the way we're going to do it is what we call the App Store. This is an application we've written to deliver apps to the iPhone. And we're going to put it on every single iPhone with the next release of the software. The problem is, netbooks aren't better at anything. <laughs> they, they're just cheap laptops. And we don't think but they're a third category device. But we think we've got something that is. And we'd like to show it to you today for the first time. And we call it the iPad. So, let me show it to you now. This is what it looks like. I happen to have one right here. That's what it looks like. Very thin. It's just like this.
So, 